Let's go tide pooling. We're going to take you to Alaska, Washington, California. What an amazing thing to do. It's actually a mix of beach combing and tide pooling and looking on wharfs for these beautiful sea creatures. We were fortunate to go to the Inside Passage of Alaska and to Glacier Bay. Here at Bartlett Cove along the wharves, we were able to see these amazing creatures attached to the metal platform of the wharf. Southeast Alaska and South Central Alaska are the best places to find intertidal invertebrates. Look for rocky beaches with cobbles, boulders, and perched pools, which provide the best protection for invertebrates. Tide pool residents. Your tide pool experience can be affected by many factors, including the salinity of the water, the amount of fresh water runoff, and glacial silt, muddying the waters, and the height of the tides. You always want to find out when the tide is, the high tide and low tide, to know when to go tide pooling. There are usually two high and two low tides daily on the west coast. The times for high and low shift about 50 minutes later on subsequent days. This means if high tide is at 9 a.m. one day, it will be high at about 9.50 a.m. the next day, and around 10.40 a.m. the next, and so on. To see these beautiful creatures, you must be there at the perfect time, or wait a while, which we've often done. Other places to see these beautiful creatures are special aquariums, like the one we went to in Juneau. We also drove out to the end of the road in Juneau and went along the beach and found a number of starfish. These beaches are incredible. My favorite. It's rose Roosevelt Beach. It's secluded, but you'll have to wait, but you'll see it soon. In northern Washington, we learned that Larrabee State Park is a great place to go tide pooling. When we were able to go there, the tide was not working with us, but we did get to go to this state park, which interestingly enough is Washington State's very first state park. We tried. We found a few snails. The 41-mile Hidden Coast State Scenic Byway is a great roadway to explore secluded beaches and to explore tide pools at low tide. The byway ends in the Quinault Indian Nation at Tahola, where the Quinault River dumps into the Pacific Ocean. We spent several hours before sunset at Roosevelt Beach, south of the town of Pacific Beach. Our intent was to observe sea urchins and tide pools at low tide. We were rewarded with a bounty of the green and pink anemones and a lot of black mussels clinging tightly to the varying size sea stacks. And we have actually gone back to Roosevelt Beach because it is such a spectacular place and one of the most photogenic beaches we've ever been to. Have you hit the subscribe button yet? Hit the thumbs up! Dropping down into California while walking along the stunning Pacific Ocean shore, see emerging waves riding atop the royal blue and deep green salt water, then crashing across the dark sand, creating defined ripple marks. Look for whales in the surf, barking California sea lions on offshore rocks and harbor seals playing in the frothy waves. Rugged grassy cliffs and black boulders typically bind the sandy beaches on the northern coastline. Several beach access points are available, but one of the easiest places to reach the water is from the rear exit of the Cuchel Visit. Visitor Center near Oreck of Redwood National Park. Low tide reveals a myriad of marine life in the rocky coastal tide pools, including delicate sea anemones, starfish, chitons, sea cucumbers, limpets, barnacles, and tiny fish. Many fish, such as gunnels and sculpins, designed with red or green blue hues, blend in with the brightly colored algae. As I just mentioned, ask a ranger for the best time of day and the most likely place to see these vibrant creatures. The best time of the year is late spring through early fall. Just south of Bodega Bay, we also found these big beauties. The Montana de Oro State Park is famous for its tide pools. This amazing state park has over 8,000 acres of open areas with miles of coastline and bays. There are a few bays there that are lined with high rocks and rough areas. This makes an ideal location for tide pools. Whenever you're in a region like this, be sure to research. There is usually a lot of good information or call park rangers and ask them the best times. Determine what time low tide and high tide are so you know when to exactly plan your visit. Down in San Diego, Point Lobo, which guards San Diego Bay. Go to the 160-acre Cabrillo National Monument to experience where California started. We hiked portions of the Bayside Trail, which winds through the coastal shrubbery, offering incomparable coastal views and a place to see spectacular migrating birds. There is a parking area that gives you access to the tide pools. The plants and animals that live there in the tide pools at Cabrillo are too numerous to list. You may encounter on the brief visit are illustrated here. During our visit, 
we were unable to tide pool, but that just means we have to go back at the right time. American history. Learn it. Love it. Appreciate it. Share our American history. Don't forget to subscribe. And while you're at it, hit the thumbs up. Thank you.